Bắt đầu trong 3, 2, 1, bắt đầu Hello everyone In this video, let's continue with our first review and consolidation module In the first video, we have reviewed the first 8 modules in the course Now let's turn to consolidation That means adding a few more discussions relevant to what we have learned so far the first topic I'd like to add to our training today is on the topic of young learners. It is most relevant and connected with Module 4, where we discussed methods of teaching English to young learners. But I will show you how it could be all interrelated with other modules we've learned as well. But first, in this video, we will discuss the questions of who are young learners? What types of young learners are there? And what are their main characteristics that might be important to our teaching practices? Let's start with the first question. Who are young learners? As people start to learn foreign languages at a younger and younger age these days, we can expect young learners to be not only those at primary schools, but also earlier than that, such as preschool, nursery schools, and even toddlers. This suggests that there are indeed many types of young learners. Scrivener in 2011 suggests at least two main groups of young learners, namely, first, very young learners at preschool and lower primary, and second, middle and higher primary learners. We will discuss different activities for each group in another video. For now, let's focus on their characteristics in general. But first, here's a note of caution. The following descriptions are not true to every single young learner out there. But it is a useful list of descriptions provided by the TKT course by Cambridge University Press. That should help you plan your lesson with young learners better in the future. So, let's start with the first note, which underlines the children's need for movement in the classroom. This is why we discussed the TPR, or Total Physical Response Approach, in Module 3. As this approach allows for more movements in the classroom. The new Tiang Anh textbooks also include many games, songs and speaking activities that ask students to move around too. But when possible, think of more activities that encourage students to move in the classroom. The second idea suggests that children can concentrate for shorter periods. That's why in module 2, we learned that a class period at primary school is shorter than that at higher levels. For our English class, that means we need a wide range of activities because it is not productive to keep young learners sit and do one activity for too long. The next point is very important as it focuses on the ways children acquire new knowledge. That is, through experiencing things around them. While we often use lectures for older learners, it should not be effective for young learners. They learn through many ways, through listening, seeing, and don't forget touching, smelling, and even tasting as well. One way to remember this is to recall the multiple intelligences theory as summarized in this diagram. This will suggest different ways to learn in the classroom. Have you ever been frustrated and tired of disciplining a group of young learners? Don't be upset, because the next characteristic makes clear that young learners are not very able to control and plan their own behavior. They are not aware of themselves and or their actions either. Sometimes, you may think they are being naughty or rebellious, while they are just being hyperactive, excited, energetic, they are being themselves. Therefore, instead of being frustrated, 
think of activities that allow them to release or channel part of this energy to learning, such as through games, role play, singing, or communicative activities. On the other hand, remember to manage and plan the lesson well. And these are actually the topics we discussed in module 5 and 6. Young learners are not always problematic. The next characteristic is gold or valuable in language learning. They are not afraid of making mistakes or taking risks. And they pay attention to meaning in language. That's why you should encourage them to produce English as much as possible in the classroom. The topics on facilitating spoken production and spoken interactions in modules 7 and 8 are examples of how we can do that. But there could be more ideas. Try to encourage their creativity through activities such as creative writing, projects and fluency development activities. The last characteristic could be an advantage or disadvantage. They have limited life experience. The bad news is you might have to select topics, texts and tasks that are not very demanding in terms of background knowledge for these learners. But the good news is they are curious and willing to learn. Use English to widen their knowledge such as reading stories, watching documentaries for kids and so on. They will learn English and use English to learn about the world around them as well. That's one more motivation for them to learn and one more motivation for you to teach. So, these are the main characteristics of young learners as suggested by the TKT course. Take one more look at the list and I hope that it will become useful for you when using the new textbooks with this group of learners. In this extra part of the video, we will watch a short video about teaching English to young learners to expand our knowledge about this area. The video is from an organization called DCLC Halifax and the title is Teaching English to Young Learners. As you watch, take notes to answer the following questions. Here are the questions. Take a couple of minutes to study them before we play the video. Are you ready? Remember to watch the video and take notes at the same time. You can pause or replay the video as many times as you wish before we discuss the answers together. Do you enjoy watching the video? And have you got all the answers? Let's reflect. Questions 1. What is TEYL? That should be easy, right? TEYL stands for Teaching English to Young Learners. This is also the title of this video. Question 2. What are the three stages of TEYL? According to the video, this course on TEYL will help you improve your English language teaching to young learners by going through three stages. They are 1. How teachers think 2. Become a practice teacher. That means you will be ready to teach classes of young learners. Aunt. 3. Create creative activities. Do you think these reflect your needs, as English language teachers to young learners as well? Good. Now let's move on to question 3. Question 3. To teach grammar points, such as preposition, for example, in the box. On the box. What does the teacher, trainer in the video use? The answer is they use real objects, or realia. By definition, realia are ordinary objects used in a class for teaching purposes. Many young learners are visual learners. They learn by observing things around them. So using real objects to teach difficult concepts, such as those in grammar, is helpful. Question 4. What do many of the teachers or trainers create with colored paper in the video? The answer is they use animal puppets to teach English. Storytelling is common and effective among children because they love stories and love finding out about the world by observing or through their imagination. So we can make use of that in teaching English, such as through puppets as in the video. 
Have you used puppets in your own classroom? Well, why don't you try them sometimes? That should be fun. Let's move to the last questions now. Question 5. What does the teacher, or trainer create, to help young learners learn idiom, such as cost an arm and a leg? The answer is an idiom chart. On the screen is an example of idiom charts. They are focused, selective, clear, and pleasant to look at with vivid images, colors and highlights. That should be useful for young learners, when they have to learn something as challenging as idioms. Question 6. What do the teachers or trainees mention, as the main strengths of the TEYL course? The answer is, they love the good trainers or teachers. The course gives lots of example. It helps them to gain more experience, and have fun with lots of activities, etc. Do you love a course like that? I hope our course can be that good to you too. I so, to sum up, I hope that by watching and studying the video above, you have a clearer idea about what is TEYL? How is it different from other areas of English language teaching, and what are a few techniques to improve teaching difficult points, such as in grammar and vocabulary, to young learners? We will have more information about these topics in the following modules, so stay tuned. See you in the next video.